Hey, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. A couple of you asked, what would we do without electricity and without gas? Essentially, what would we do without power? And that's a good question, but it involves apocalyptic type talk, and I'm not a fan of a pop. <laughs> I'm not a fan of a pop. I'm not a fan of apocalyptic type talk. We homestead and hope. But I will tell you, if we had no power, that would definitely mean no more pool. That'd be sad. So what would we do without power? We use power for our electric fences. We use power to store our food. We use power to cook our food. We use gas to run our tractors, even the tractors that aren't currently working. That's Hank. We'll get him sorted. And Lucy, our Jubilee. What would we do without those things? Without freezers to store our meat? Well, this requires a few base assumptions. This means that we're not having rolling brownouts. This means that there is no electricity. Ergo, no gasoline. This means society has collapsed. Infrastructure has collapsed. And I'm not sure we're headed for that. We study history, the fall of the Roman Empire. When the exact date happened is debated. You can see the point where they started to contract as the world's power. But when did they actually fall? And you could say the same thing about the society we're living in now. Did we peak in the 50s? Was that the end? The last war that we actually won was World War II? Korea was a standstill, et cetera, et cetera? I don't know. I'm much more of the mind that that's how our fall is going to be seen. But let's just say that everything, for the sake of argument, has gone <gasps> Our electric fences run off of battery-operated solar power. They have solar-powered brains that send out a pulse. Now, this will work for a while, but five years or so, those batteries are gonna wear out and you're gonna have to replace them. And if society has ended, that's not gonna be an option, is it? We'll make them. I live on some acreage with plenty of wood and we will start chopping down trees and making fences the way they used to. See, here's the thing. Food, power, those are consumables. You have to have a constant supply of them because they're being consumed. You can't store enough of your own power and food to sustain your life indefinitely. If we have no gasoline, then we are going to use hand tools to do all of our gardening. Now we would have to eliminate how many animals we have, we could not maintain that many and feed ourselves. But I'll give you our basic plan and give you some tips for things you can do. Our thought is if the apocalypse actually happens and we have six months to a year of stored power and food, then we can transition to the old ways. So this is our six to 12 month plan. This is our little Jenny. As they say across the pond, our generator, wired into our panel box, and propane. I'm not gonna show you how I wired it because I don't want you to get electrocuted. I'm not an electrician, but there's plenty of videos out there that will show you how to wire a generator in. And I will give you real numbers. That generator cost about $1,000. It's a dual fuel, so it will run off of propane. And I think it cost me about 50 bucks to set it up inside the panel box. And then I bought propane. Why propane? Well, I'm glad you asked. Gasoline and diesel have a much higher, even kerosene, much higher energy output for the amount of material that you burn. But propane essentially lasts forever. So instead of spending $2,500, $4,000, $10,000 on a whole house generator, I got one that will run things that I need to run, like my well. And then I went and bought a bunch of these 100 pound tanks, filled them, and I have stored them. Refrigerators and freezers actually are coolers with a motor. You don't have to leave them on constantly. I'm sure you've heard the compressor kick on and off in your fridge or freezer. So in theory, I can run my generator for 30 minutes in the morning, have all my freezers plugged in, run the water that I need, and shut them off. That will give me six months, roughly, maybe nine of power to sustain me while we switch gears. Because if you're not working at all, then all you're doing is building fences manually, 
planting food manually, all those things. Digging your root cellar, making a smokehouse. If you have the hand tools for these jobs, then you can spend a week doing it because you have nothing else to do but survive. This is the hard part about trying to do it the old fashioned way while we live in modern society because I have a full time job. We have kids that we're homeschooling. There's a whole bunch of other trappings that would all of a sudden disappear. Now you say, well, I live in an apartment. I live in the city. I don't have land. There are things you can do to make yourself valuable. I'm not gonna tell you exactly what our plan is, but I'll give you a couple ideas. We have arrangements with a few other families to provide security around our homestead, labor, knowledge, and tools they are going to bring if the apocalypse actually happens in the way that we're talking. Lack of power, lack of fuel, societal collapse, you know, renegades, marauders, all that bit. So, if you know somebody with land, make good friends with them, and then have something to offer, whether it's security in the form of ammunition, guns, gold, silver, knowledge, the ability to build things, repair things, make things, craft things, or even bringing food. You can store a year's worth of food in your apartment by going to one of those freeze-dried companies and stocking up and show up so that while that transition is happening, like in our property, where we're going to have power for six months to a year, off and on, while we transition, we need to have food to eat. We need animals to mature. We need root cellars dug. We need smoke houses built. We need dehydration. We need all those things. You can make all those things and do it the way our ancestors used to do it without being nomadic. So it's possible. It's just complicated. But I don't think it's going to happen that way. I think we're going to continue to degrade as a society, such as we are. People are going to be fleeing cities, such as they are. The population growth in almost all of the cities is down. And I think the country's slowly going to kind of fracture itself into little pieces. And there'll be some hiccups along the way, but I don't think it's going to be some massive, it's all over type thing. Where people are running around and shooting each other and those kind of things. It's good to be prepared to that level, but you can't live your life that way. You can leave after watching this video, jump in your car and go get into an accident and your whole world could be over just like that. So, we trust in the Lord, not in ourselves. And we know that all good things come from the Father above. And that's why we homestead in hope. I think this is a great way to live your life. I think being prepared is a great way to live your life. Look at the ant and the way that they work. They have neither boss nor master and yet they store. Those are, these are biblical principles and good principles to live by. So don't do it in fear, my friends. Do it in hope. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you have liked what you've seen. If so, please hit that like button. I would invite you to subscribe to our channel where we will wax philosophical as we build random nonsense constantly. Keep growing as you grow. We'll see you next time.